Sound waves are longitudinal waves that propagate in a medium. The medium can be a gas, for example, sound waves can propagate in air. The medium can be a liquid, for example, sound waves can propagate in water. And it can also be a solid, like the walls, for example. Our um, human ear is sensitive to waves between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. Um, there are sound waves that we cannot hear. Below 20 Hz, they are called infrasonic waves, for example, seismic waves. And above 20 kHz, they are called ultrasonic waves, for example, the waves from a sonar. Uh, don't confuse ultrasonic with supersonic. Right? Supersonic is a word uh, that is used to characterize uh, a speed that is larger than the speed of sound. Now, other animals have different hearing range. For example, dogs can hear higher frequencies, and you probably know that there are whistles uh, at higher frequencies that can be used with dogs. Uh, in the previous chapter, for a transverse wave on a string, we have represented the displacement of a particle with the letter Y. In this chapter, we will continue to use the letter Y for the displacement, but remember that for a longitudinal wave, the displacement is along the same axis as the direction of propagation of the wave. So do not confuse Y with the vertical axis. For example, a positive value of Y can represent the particle being displaced to the right, and a negative value of Y can represent a particle being displaced to the left. Because the particles are displaced, there will be regions that have higher pressure and regions that have lower pressure. And we will write the pressure fluctuation as P, which, which will be a function of position X and time T. Now, don't confuse the pressure fluctuation with the absolute pressure. Right? The absolute pressure will be equal to the ambient pressure plus the pressure fluctuation. So we have P0, the ambient pressure, plus the pressure fluctuation, small p. And the pressure fluctuation can be positive or negative, but the absolute pressure is always going to be positive. Now, in this video, we will show that the pressure fluctuation is related to the particle displacement by this relation, P equal minus B dy dx, where P is the pressure fluctuation, B is the bulk modulus of the medium, and Y represents the displacement of the particles. Now, to derive this relation, let's consider a volume of the medium contained in between the position X and X plus dx. This volume is equal to the product of the section of the tube, S, multiplied by the length, delta X. So V is equal to S times delta X. After a small time, the particles have moved. The particles that were at the position X moved by a quantity, uh, say Y1, and the particles at the position X plus delta X have moved, moved by a quantity uh, Y2. So we can calculate the change of volume, delta V, which will be the product of the section multiplied by the difference Y2 minus Y1. Right? Obviously, if Y1 and Y2 are equal, the volume will not change, and delta V is equal to zero. But if Y1 and Y2 are different, then delta V will be positive or negative. Now we need to introduce the bulk modulus. The bulk modulus is a quantity that represents the stress you need to apply to a material to change its volume. So it is the ratio of the bulk stress divided by the bulk strain. So here, the bulk stress will be the pressure fluctuation, P, and the bulk strain is equal to minus dV over V. The minus sign here is to get a positive number for the bulk modulus. Right? When you apply a positive stress on the material, its volume decreases, so delta V is negative, and so minus delta V is positive. So the bulk modulus is a quantity that varies a lot between different materials. For example, the change of volume of air. Uh, to change the volume of air, you will need a small pressure. So the bulk modulus is on the order of 10 to the 5 pascal, which is uh, relatively small. Um, water, for example, to change the volume of water, you need a larger pressure of the order of 10 to the power 9 pascal. 
And for a solid material like steel, then you need even more pressure, um, so its bulk modulus is even larger. Now, let's look at the expression for the change of volume dV over V. This, in fact, represents the limit uh, when delta x tends to zero of delta V over V. And we have the expression for delta V, right? It is the section S times Y of X plus delta X minus Y of X. And the expression for the volume V is just simply S times delta X. Now you can simplify and remove the section. And also you can recognize that this expression represents the derivative of the Y function for the displacement. Now you can combine this with the definition of the bulk modulus, and you obtain that the pressure fluctuation P is equal to minus B dy dx. This is the relation we wanted to show. Now let's look at it a little more. Uh, what, this, what does this uh, formula mean? Right? The pressure fluctuation is the derivative of the displacement. So on this graph, you can see the displacement in red color at a given time as a function of position x. And the pressure fluctuation is shown in the blue color. Now, because the pressure is given by the derivative of the displacement, you can see that when the displacement is at a maximum or a minimum, then the derivative is zero and the pressure fluctuation is zero. And when the displacement is zero, then the pressure fluctuation is at a maximum or a minimum. Now, these two functions, the displacement or the pressure fluctuation, they both represent the same sound wave, but often we use the pressure fluctuation rather than the displacement. And this is because it is just easier to measure uh, pressure than it is to measure the displacement. Now let's answer an example of question using this relation. What is the amplitude of pressure fluctuations for a sinusoidal sound wave? Now remember, that a sinusoidal uh, wave has a function of the form y is equal to a cosine kx minus omega t. And again, remember that it could be a sine function or there could be a phase shift so that it would be cosine um, kx minus omega t plus phi. Uh, here we're just using this particular function. Now, to get the pressure fluctuation, you just need to take the derivative with respect to x and multiply by minus b. So you will get that p is equal to b k a sine k x minus omega t. So the pressure, uh, sorry, the amplitude of pressure fluctuations will be p max equal b k a. Now with this relation, we can calculate the pressure amplitude. Uh, and uh, for example, at 1000 Hertz, the minimum pressure amplitude that can be perceived with normal hearing is about three uh, times 10 to the power minus five Pascal. But age usually brings uh, a loss of sensitivity, especially at high frequencies. Uh, now, this is ugly, but uh, it's got an IG Nobel for peace in 2006, uh, the mosquito alarm is an alarm that was designed to emit a high frequency sound that is only audible uh, to young people. And sadly, uh, it was used to repel young people. Um, on the other side, young people can use a ringtone with high frequencies so that it cannot be heard by teachers in class, for example. Now, since we're talking about frequencies, you should keep in mind that a particular sound is often a mixture of several frequencies. Right. Musical sounds, for example, have complicated wave functions. Uh, this is not a simple sine or cosine function, but the sum of several functions with different frequencies. And we would call this the harmonic content. So a single note played on a clarinet will have many harmonics at the same time. And the, note, uh, the same note played on a flute will have different harmonic content compared to the same note played on a clarinet. So even if the two tones produced by different instruments have the same fundamental frequency, the sound is different because of different harmonic content. Now, when you speak, the vowels A or E 
also sound different because of different harmonic content. And even the noise has uh, an harmonic content and the noise that you hear contains harmonics at many, many different frequencies.